Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. There's a vague stew-like presence in the house and I find it very disturbing. Because you know, you cook spaghetti, it smells like spaghetti. You fry chicken, it smells like chicken. But there hasn't been any stew in here. Now there has been some wet dog food, which is not very popular with Luna, but uh, I just, I, I almost want to conduct a seance or something like that. It's like, can we speak to the stew-like presence in the house? Like, what do you want from us? When will you leave? Uh, but anyway, I got a bunch of sales yesterday. I was like, how come everyone's buying Jawbreakers Forever and uh, Iron Sights 3? Oh, it's because I actually did a screen capture video and I showed the Indiegogos and I mentioned them. So Jawbreakers Forever is being colored. Um, we're working on the cover for Impossible Stars uh, 2 today. And uh, this just continues just to be the best. I literally am going to like, but oh Jesus. I'm going to buy trade paperbacks of this and like send it to my buddies in the Marines on their birthday. Like it's so good. It's still like 12 years until Batman and Superman go into the public domain. And I'm already coming up with plots, coming up with scenes, and they're already writing articles about it. This is from a few days ago. I, I hate like when modern movies, when they have to explain everything, you know, Michael Keaton, he's like, what does he say about bats? He's like, they're great survivors. You're like, oh, okay, that's why you became Batman. Okay, whatever. Um, but then you got Batman Begins where they really over-explain everything. So I'm coming up with my idea for my, you know, the public domain Batman that I'm going to do in 12 years. Although I'm probably going to start production on it much earlier and just have it ready and then release it. So I was like, you know, at some point you have to have this angry, you know, orphan say, I'm going to dress like Batman. And it's kind of a leap. So I just, <laughs> I'm trying not to be that funny. Um, the tone will make this joke work or not. So he's basically, he's going to be rushing and spying on people and, and making plans. And then he, he comes up with an idea. And then he's like, oh, you know, Alfred, I don't have time to explain this, but I need you to build me a terrifying bat costume. He goes and does something else, and he's just about, he needs the costume, he needs to disguise himself, and then he goes back to Alfred, and Alfred holds up this Adam West looking thing, <laughs> and Bruce is just like, what the hell is that? Why is it blue? And he's like, well, I assume this was, you know, for a party. I said terrifying. It's like, okay, you know, that's why I covered your face. It's kind of scary. But it's like, how is it a bat? Well, look at the look at the symbol on the chest. That's a drawing of a bat, so you know it's a bat. I guess it'll have to do. <laughs> I don't know. That might be too silly. It might break immersion. So it says, uh, There's bound to be legal drama when Batman and Superman enter the public domain in coming years, but experts caution there's, quote, no precedent for the thorny issue. And I would argue that because they just had a movie called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, that was announced and is not getting any challenge from Disney, which has, you know, had copyright and trademark on Winnie the Pooh. Although I think, I believe it was a license, not, it was some, but it's in the public domain now. And they have all kinds of stuff, you know, product out there. As DC charts a new path over the next decade, it could face even bigger issues at the end of the tunnel. Warner Brothers has a monopoly on making movies about Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, but the clock is ticking. I love how in the current day, people don't even talk about this as... They don't even talk about these as comic book characters. These are movie franchise characters. Beginning in 2034, DC's most prominent characters, as well as Marvel, as well as everyone. It's, so yeah, in 2034, it's going to be Superman. 2035, Batman, Namor, Shazam, Human Torch. Robin, Joker, Catwoman, Flash in 2036. Captain America, Wonder Woman in 2037. And then Alfred, Alfred was not named uh, as a character until, you know, years after Batman started. So you don't get to actually do stories about Alfred. And I have an Alfred story until 2039. DC's most prominent characters and some of the most well-recognized characters in the world will enter the public domain, at which point they could be up for grabs for companies outside DC and its parent to use. But Insider spoke to two legal experts that specialize in copyright and trademark law who said that the matter is far more complicated than it appears and that there's little precedent for characters of this stature and popularity that drive millions of dollars in merchandising sales and lead big budget 
tentpole movies entering the public domain. The closest recent example might be Mickey Mouse. The courts will have a big say in sorting this out. There's no precedent I can think of. This will be a developing area of the law. Well, there actually has been. There's been Tarzan and Sherlock Holmes and John Carter, and there have been legal challenges. I believe the estate that has the rights to John Carter challenged Dynamite. Uh, the Sherlock movie with uh, Eleven from Stranger Things was challenged because the Sherlock stories, some of them are in the public domain and some of them aren't. So Sherlock got relatively more warm and human as the series went on. So if you show him being warm and human, that they were arguing, well, that's from a later development that we still own. You know, the early, but uh, they lost when they did that. Under U.S. law, works introduced before 1978 enter the public domain 95 years after they were published. These characters are the crown jewels of DC and therefore extremely important to Warner Brothers' discovery. The company is likely to put up a fight, and anyone looking to take advantage of them being in the public domain would face an uphill battle, Zerner and Greener told Insider. For starters, Greener noted that there have been plenty of potentially derivative works of the characters in other words, the copyright holder DC creates a second, separate work based on the original work. The Superman of 2022 is nothing like the Superman of 1938. When DC originally introduced Superman, he could only leap tall buildings in a single bound. He couldn't fly. The character has gone through multiple revisions over the years, as have other comic book characters, including Batman and Wonder Woman. So this is brought up a lot, and you have to be really careful. When Batman is unlocked and becomes public domain in 2035, you can only use the things from that first year of publishing. This is not just costumes, characters, and names, but it's also attitude. If he's murdering everyone he sees, which he wasn't exactly like, but he was more murderous, and then you do a happy-go-lucky Batman... They can say, no, that's a later version that is still under copyright, and they can sue the shit out of you. To put it simply, comic book to put it simply, comic book history is usually split into several eras, including the Golden Age, which covers the 1930s to the 1950s, the Silver Age, which covers the 1950s to the 1970s, the Bronze Age, which covers the 70s to the mid-80s, and the modern age, which covers the mid-80s to the present day. If someone was to do a Superman movie in 2034, and he didn't fly, is, it, is that still violating the copyright? This issue will be litigated. The second biggest obstacle pertains to trademark law, the experts said. A copyright reflects the physical image, but a trademark has a public meaning and perception that goes beyond that. I actually think there are going to be very few copyright lawsuits. Copyright is based on stuff like you have Sherlock being be, uh, being very close to people and that happened in the later books that are still under copyright therefore we are suing you. Trademark is going to be where almost all of the lawsuits are. Trademark is conceptual. The trademark covers brand identity. He explains that Superman has been associated with a specific brand and storytelling at DC for years. And something else could infringe on the public's mind with what they understand Superman to be. There would be two competitors in the market and Trademark doesn't like that. So the main issue is, and I understand it's completely, I actually totally agree with this. I consider US copyright and trademark law to be its probably most corrupt law in that it was constantly extended, basically for the benefit of Disney. Every time Mickey Mouse got within 20 years of going into the public domain, miraculously the laws would change. But it hasn't been changed in more than 20 years now, so it looks like it's going to be stable. But you go to anyone and you say Mickey Mouse and they instantly think of Disney. So if you make Mickey Mouse and he's doing all sorts of heinous shit, Disney can, I think, justifiably say, you are damaging our brand. We are associated with Mickey Mouse the public is going to associate Mickey Mouse with Disney, and your Mickey Mouse, although based on the public domain, 
is harming our trademark. And I think I think that's legitimate. So if you did, you know, uh, Mickey Mouse the serial killer, because he was a kind of a crazy, wild character, like shooting guns and like trying to kill himself when he was first introduced. You're going to need to put like public domain above Mickey Mouse and then like right on the credits and not in small letters, in very large letters, you will put this is based on the public domain Mickey Mouse of 1938. It has no endorsement or connection to the Walt Disney uh, Corporation, whatever. And you're going to need to be like, it's, it needs to be huge. Because that is a hurdle. You say Spider-Man. I think, I mean, 10 years, well, 20 plus years ago. I, I think the average norm in America just put like DC characters, Marvel characters, Garfield, Scooby-Doo, like in the same pot. Even a grandma right now knows that Spider-Man is Marvel, Batman is DC because of the movies. But you got to get a jury to agree with you. And a jury's going to say, yeah, when I see Mickey Mouse, I think of Disney. And I feel like this is somehow endorsed to Disney. And that makes me look negative on Disney. It's, it's going to be difficult. There are similar cases to DC's future public domain fight. Okay, well, you said something different higher up in the article. While there's no precedent on par with what could transpire from these characters being in the public domain, there are similar cases. Steamboat Willie, the first iteration of Mickey Mouse, is set to enter the public domain in 2024. That version of the character is far different from the modern day Mickey Mouse, which would likely still be protected. Zerner said that the artist would have to make clear that their version isn't associated with Disney. Trademark is an identifier, and there isn't a character and company more synonymous than Mickey and Disney. I don't know if there will be a surge of Mickey Mouse ripoffs in the coming years, but there could be. Kind of ends abruptly. <laughs> Remember in elementary school where you'd all have to give presentations and the dumb kid would like never come up with like a thesis or a summary. He would just like say, that's the end. <laughs> okay, apparently that's the end of the article. We got some advertisement for Monsanto or something like that. But um, this was a good article. It was basic, but it was good. This is my takeaway. And this is the one where, uh, you know, sometime in the next 10 years, I'll have to actually hire a copyright trademark lawyer. Because if they have trademarked the Batman symbol, trademarks never end. So do you have to create a different Batman symbol for Batman, even if it's the Batman of 1939? Can you use the word Batman in the title? Can you use it in the advertising? I'm pretty sure you can use it in the book because there's been similar things. Uh, John Carter, when the movie came out, some fly-by-night company released a movie of A Princess of Mars, which was the first John Carter novel, which was in the public domain. And they changed a lot of stuff. They made him, an, I, I believe, an Afghanistan war vet instead of a civil war vet. Because one of the arguments is, well, you can do that version, but you can't change anything. you got to do it exactly. So my prediction and um, you know, is that there is not going to be a huge challenge, just like Disney in you know, the estate of Winnie the Pooh Man, E.E. Uh, e. E. Milne. They didn't challenge this you know, scary Winnie the Pooh movie because, hey, it's in the public domain right now. And they even got Winnie the Pooh in the title. Um, although I'm thinking maybe when it officially gets released, it'll just be called Blood and Honey. So the key takeaways are... People are going to make it, but I don't think as much as you think. I think the fear of a lawsuit will keep people away. And also the, the, the fear that it will not be considered real. It'll be like, yeah, but it's like the public domain. I do think by then DC and Marvel will get into some sort of licensing thing where you will be able to put on your cover, you know, the official uh, Marvel superhero. It doesn't say made by Marvel. But, you know, it, it makes it official in your head. I think there are some things that are so associated with the company like Mickey Mouse that it would be very easy to get a jury to side with Disney to say that the common person is going to misunderstand this as being endorsed by Disney. I think, I think that's common sense. So it will be like this weird thing where the title might literally be like Public Domain Batman 1939 
And then when you open it right there on the credits in huge letters, it says not endorsed, created, or, or like all the different descriptions, not in any way connected to DC Comics, Warner Discovery. This is based solely on the public domain and it is an independent work. Um, but I don't think, I know some people are saying the laws are going to change. I don't think the laws will change. It's, it's way too close. Um, even 12 years in copyright law is like, you're right there. I mean, we're two years away from Mickey Mouse. Like, this has never happened before. So, yes, all of these characters are going to fall into the public domain. Their trademarks are not. Trademarks are forever. Now, things like John Carter are trademarked. That's why when you see stuff based on the public domain, it'll be called, like, Warrior of Mars. Stuff like that. But I think the character's name being trademarked could be challenged in court. And I think it could be one. It's just like, is it worth it? But you can use these characters, you know, and you can use these characters without... It's not even fair use. They're public domain now. You can use them. But uh, I think someone is going to get really hemmed up. I think it's going to be more like in apparel. Because when you start selling public domain Mickey Mouse shirts... At the pool, Gus, at the swap meet on eBay, I think the average person is going to say this is a Disney shirt, so I think they could get hemmed up like that. By the way, this is a completely different subject. One of the things I always find so hilarious when, is when SJWs are like, you just don't like this because it's a woman. This is a movie starring two white men written and directed by a white man. And God damn, there was nothing but arguing about every single aspect of this. I gotta say, in this nice, you know, fairly high resolution, still, I think these costumes are cool, and I like both of these actors. Supposedly, they're bringing back Ben Affleck, but you're not going to be able to do the Frank Miller robot armor version of Batman for another 50 years, because that launched in 1986. Anyway, Drawbreakers Forever. It's amazing how things sell when you remind people that they exist. There was a bunch of sales. I was like, is somebody promoting this somewhere? I, I promoted it. I did. That's what it is. Iron Sights 3, Impossible Stars 2 combo campaign. You don't have to buy both of them together, but if you do, you save 10%. All three of these books are completely drawn. And the runner add-on for Jawbreakers Forever, we should finish the print file today. Um, oh, by the way, the Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar autographed books did not go out yesterday because... I forgot how long that stuff takes. I was like, okay, so I already made the labels, so I signed like 130 of them, put them in packages, you know, two, three hours. Oh, God. I was doing like 15 an hour. I might finish it today. I might just finish packing today and mail them off tomorrow. But Jawbreakers Forever, Iron Size 3, Impossible Stars 2, all are completely drawn. Interiors. And then the add-on, the Narzak add-on runner, is done. And I was like... I gotta cross-reference it, but I'm guessing that most of the people who backed it also backed Knife Hand Blind Spot and Mind Your Business, so we'll just go to print now on Runner and then send it along with that. And in the rare cases where you backed Runner but you didn't back those other two, it'll go out with uh, Jawbreakers Forever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.